Okay, and our exponential growth function, I'm going to write it up here. You need to copy it down, make sure we copy it down correctly, and then we'll talk about what everything stands for. Yeah, y is equal to a parentheses 1 plus r to the t power. Let's make sure we have that written down correctly. And then we'll talk about what everything stands for. First of all, this is going to be used to show um, something that's growing, how we call it, growing exponentially. So it might be the population of an animal or, or people. It might be um, just the amount of something growing at this exponential rate. So when we look at this, our A, this is, this is just, by the way, this is A times B to the X power, right? It is an exponential function. A, B is the whole parentheses, and then instead of an X, we have a T. So it's the same equation that we looked at on Friday. It's the same equation from 6.3. It's just giving it a little more definition in terms of real world stuff. So our A, just like our A was our Y intercept, our A is going to be our initial amount. Initial or starting amount. That's our A value. That initial or that starting amount. The one is always going to be a one. It's going to stay a one. The R is the rate of growth. And we're going to say as a decimal. We want that as a decimal. Rate of growth as a decimal. So they're, they're probably going to give that to you as a percent, right? A 4% rate of growth. And then we would change that into a decimal. If it's a 4% rate of growth, 0 0.04 would be our decimal. What do we think T stands for? What does T always stand for? Time. T is time. T is time. And typically, we're talking in years, but it could be other stuff as well. So we'll just put time. And then Y is our final amount. So that's how much we have when it's all said and done, after that amount of time. Yeah. So if T is in years, and we have something in minutes, would that be our rational? Uh, it would have to be. Um, but in this, actually, in this situation, if it's growing per minute, then we would just put the number of minutes there. In one of our future ones, then we'll have to do fractions, but this one is just whatever that number is, we put it in. All right. Good. Any other questions right now about our exponential growth function before we start looking at problems? How are we going to do with this? Take a look at the problem here. Should have given it at home. Good. All right. So it says the inaugural attendance of an animal. I almost said animal music festival. That'd be different. Of an annual music festival is 150,000. The attendance Y increases 8% each year. Okay, they're asking two different questions here. First one, write an exponential growth function that represents the attendance after T years. So that first question is not asking us for a specific number, right? It's asking us to write an equation, to write the formula after T years. So we don't know a number of years yet. So we're creating that equation still with the letter T in there, okay? I want you to write out what you think, what goes where for this equation. Okay. 
Brigham, what do you think is going where in this equation? All right, raise your hand and tell me one thing. Where is it going? One number, and where is it going in my equation? Eli? Uh, a is going, um, A is, um, uh, 150,000. 150,000, okay. 150,000 for A. Good. What else, Dave? Um, Y is 0.08. Okay, so 1 plus 0.08. There you go. Good. What else do we know here? Right. Uh, yeah, we're going to leave that as T, remember. Because right, they want it after T years. I know part B talks about a number of years, but part A doesn't. Part A just says after T years. So we're going to leave that as a T. So here's our equation. This is our answer for part A. Now, if we wanted to, we can simplify a little bit and change this 1 plus 0 0.08 into 1.08. Okay, You're going to see both of these types of answers. I would probably lean towards that second one, just because it's a little bit easier, a little more compact. So if we can add that rate onto the one, let's make it a 1.08. So there's our answer for A. There's our growth function that represented that represents it after T years. Okay. Good questions on that. And now it's simply asking, all right, what's the population going to be or, or what's the attendance going to be after five years? Right. Why don't you go ahead and answer part B. Use calculator. I know what's that attendance going to be in the fifth year, in the fifth year. I'm going to pause you right there because this is actually kind of a tricky question. Kind of tricks us here. Because it says in the fifth year, and, and I would say 99 to 100% of us are going to put five in for T. And T shouldn't be a five in this situation, unfortunately. T is going to end up being four. But take a look at what? Okay, let's look at our, our years. Here's the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. All right? If T is zero, the starting amount is in that first year. All right? When T is zero. T is zero, 1.08 to the zero power is equal to one. That first year we had 150,000 people. That's when T was one or sorry, when T was zero, is that first year. So that means T is going to be four for this. That is a very tricky thing to, to remember. And it's a tricky thing that they throw at us right away. Here. Typically, they wait until later on in the lesson to throw at something like that. But first example, they, they got us on it. So T is going to be 4. So we would take that 4, plug it in. Go ahead and use your calculator on that. And 
we can type that straight into the calculator. You don't need to do different steps at different times. 150,000 times 1.08 to the fourth power, type it all in at the same time. We're going to end up, we're going to end up with 204073.344. This is where we got to look at the wording of the question. Says round your answer to the nearest thousand. Thousand. So how many thousands of people should we expect at this music festival? Huh? Um, not two hundred thousand. More than that. For rounding the nearest thousand, I. Two hundred four thousand. If we want the nearest thousand, find that thousand space. That's going to stay. So it's going to be 204,000, that all rounds down to 204,000. So we're looking at 204,000 people or music goers or however you want to label it, you got to have a label. Of it. We got to know that that's people and not money. So 204,000 people for that. Exponential growth. Okay. That was a tricky one because of that four that went in for T. So hopefully we're okay there. Uh, we just really got to think about, all right, where's the starting amount and how many times after that are we going? One more thing to point out in this formula. You might see, uh, you might see the phrase, uh, oh, what did they call it? Growth factor, growth factor. The growth factor is that entire parenthesis. The growth factor is the one plus R. So you might see that, we don't see it a lot, but they are gonna ask a question about it in the homework. So growth factor is the whole one plus R. Growth rate or rate of growth is just the R. Growth factor is the whole thing. Slight different, but important. Any questions right now before we move on to our second one? Well, do we have three today? All right, our second one that we have, instead of exponential growth, is what we call exponential decay. So you're gonna rewrite it. I'm just gonna change some stuff up here. What do you think in my formula is gonna change if now I am decaying instead of growing, what well, might change here, right? You divide the um, initial amount by the growth factor. Good idea, but no. Any other ideas? If we are decaying instead of growing, decay means to get smaller, right? Growing means to get bigger. No. See what? Where? There you go. So if we are decaying, we are now subtracting that rate of growth. If we are decaying, and it's a rate of decay now. If we are decaying, a, a three percent rate of decay. Well, now I'm getting smaller. That's one minus 0.03 now. I'm getting smaller by 3% every time. So you're going to want to rewrite that okay, for decay now. Anywhere you said growth, you're going to write decay. And that plus has now become a minus. Make sure we have that down correctly. I'll give you a minute to copy all that down.
So you're going to see the same types of problems. Okay, same types of problems, except they're going to say decay instead of growth. And things are getting smaller instead of bigger. The only difference in that entire thing, the entire problem, is you're going to have a minus sign there instead of a plus. So we're not going to look at a specific word problem associated with decay. Just know it's going to be the same sort of thing. Okay. What we are going to see is they're going to take this growth versus decay thing, and we should be able to identify whether something is a growth or a decay based on a table and based on just the equation. So those are the two things we're looking at right now. And they're not overly difficult at all. Okay, once we know what we're looking for, this should be no issue. So if we look at these two tables, think to yourself, which one of these is growth and which one of these is decay? As we know what growth and decay mean, should be an issue, right? You like which one's which? Uh, is decay and growth. There you go. And what we have to do is just make sure that it's an exponential decay or an exponential growth. Remember on Friday we talked about exponential being we're multiplying by the same thing every time. So here we're multiplying by two every time. We are getting bigger. That is an exponential growth. Over here, we know we're getting smaller, but are we getting smaller exponentially? So if we look, instead of multiplying by the same thing, you can think of it as dividing by the same thing. Am I dividing by the same thing every time here? Yeah, I'm dividing by three every time. We're multiplying by one third, however you want to think about it. But we are exponentially getting smaller every time. Exponential decay, exponential growth. Again, once you know what you're looking for, should be an issue. Notice they do give you three options here. It says, does it represent exponential growth, exponential decay, or neither? So we got to be careful on that. I want you to look at these two. I want you to figure out, is it exponential growth, exponential decay, or neither? Calculator. That's completely okay. We're going to use a calculator. Take one number and divide it by the one before it. Take that, divide it by four. Take the four, divide it by 16. 16, divide it by 64. That should give you the same number every time if it's exponential. If it's not exponential, it won't give you the same number every time. All right, for this one, is this, well, which one of these is it? You have three choices here. Okay. Yeah, it's exponential decay. I'm dividing by four every time. Exponential decay, I'm getting smaller. How about for number three? What would I see back? Neither. Yeah, we're adding seven every time. This is a linear function. That's not exponential at all. All right, so this would be neither for that. Good. Okay, so then we look at equations. And we should tell just by an equation whether it is an exponential growth or an exponential decay. What about my equation tells me that it's a growth or a decay? What about my equation here? I, uh, yeah, so we're looking inside the parentheses. Remember, our gross function is 1 plus r, and our decay function is 1 minus r. So growth is always going to be above 1, and our decay is always going to be less than 1. So if we see that, they're going to ask us, is it growth or decay? Then they're going to say, identify the percent rate of change. That's just how far away is it from the number one? 
That's it. Here, this is 1.07. I can think of that as 107%. So what's my percent growth? What does it say? 7%, right? 7% growth. Over here, I can change that. I can think of that as 98%. That means every time I'm getting, I, I'm having 98% of the original. What's my percent decay for that? Eli? Two. Two. Three percent. Right? Because it's 2% away from 100. So we're just looking at that. If it's bigger than one, it's growth, smaller than one, decay, and how far away is it? That's what we're looking at. Good deal. Questions on that? Growth or decay? All right. Very important that you know those formulas. You know those formulas. You can use those formulas. We will see them on the quiz. If you don't have notes, cards, or anything, you got to know those. You got to know. Okay. We have one more that we got to look at. And I told you that we were getting into interest again. Not simple interest this time, but we are getting into what's called compound interest. Compound interest. So this formula is a little more daunting, a little more to it, more letters. Well, I'll explain it. I'll make sure we know what everything is. So let's write it down first. Y is equal to P, parentheses 1 plus R over N, parentheses to the NT power. That's N times T. NT power, N times P out there. So let's talk about what it means. P is still our original amount, but we're going to call it the principal here. Principal. And that's our original amount. R is still our rate as a decimal, just like it was before. I think a lot of the same sorts of things as we saw before, right? Initial amount, one plus something in parentheses. We got a T out there. T is going to be time. And this time specifically, this is time in years. Time in years. So this is where if they tell us that we have it for six months, we need to put a 0.5 or one half because it's half a year. So T very specifically is in years this time. Which leaves us with this letter N. And that's the big difference. That's really the only difference between this and exponential growth is that letter N. That letter N and it goes in both places, is the number of times the interest is compounded in a year. And even if you don't have any clue what that means, write it down for right now. N is the number of times the interest is compounded in a year. And they're going to use that word. They're going to use the word compounded. Compounded just means how many times a year are they giving you money? How many times a year are they giving you that interest? Most banks are going to give it to you monthly. If they give it to us monthly, if they say it's compounded monthly, what is N going to be? How many times a year is that if I say it's monthly? Right? 12. If it's monthly, then I'm going to put a 12 
in for n and n. One way as well. What if I said quarterly? Quarterly. Levi? Four. Quarterly is four times a year. What if I said yearly or annually? You like? One. So yearly or annually, you might see either one. It is one. Those really are the ones that you're going to see most often. You might see other ones. I don't think so. But I think. Let me just look here. Oh, we got one more. Semi annually. You guys done semi annually? Two. Yeah, semi annually is two. Two times a year. So that's going to be important when they give us that information when we're reading that word problem. Right? This is going to tell us what N is going to be. It's monthly, it's quarterly, yearly, semi annually, right? That's all right there. We know what N is going to be. So we're going to look at one problem here. Okay, we're going to look at one problem. We're going to see how we simplify that equation. And then we're going to be good for today. You deposit $100 in a savings account that earns 6% annual interest compounded monthly. All right, I told you you would see that word compounded. If you don't see the word compounded, you are not using this formula. Okay? If you don't see the word compounded somewhere in the problem, you're just using that exponential growth function. The, the other one that we did, the more basic one. If they say compounded, this is the one we're using. All right, I want you to look at it. I want you to tell me what number are we going to put where here? What number can we plug in for what? <laughs> Levi, what do you got? He is going to be 100. That's our original amount. Good. All right, what else do we have here? Right? 0 0.06. Make sure it's 0 0.06. And not six or, or 0.6. Right? 0 0.06 for six percent. If you put 0.6, that's a 60% interest. And if you can find 60% interest somewhere, you're gonna be super rich. If you can find six percent interest, you're gonna be super rich. Anyway, we got 0.06 in for R. Good. What else? N is going to be 12, right? Count about it monthly. So N is going to be 12. So I got a 12 there, and I got a 12 here. And remember, T is just going to be T. We don't know how many years. So here's my equation that we're looking at. Y is equal to 100, parentheses 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the 12 T power. Now, this is a perfectly good equation, but we can simplify it a little bit. We can simplify it. Let's simplify what's in the parentheses, okay? Make it look a little nicer. So we're going to do 0 0.06 divided by 12 gives me 0 0.005. So in my parentheses, I'm going to put instead 1.005. I'm just going to simplify that a little bit. Makes my equation look a little bit nicer. Again, either one of these is going to be okay. So there's our equation after T years. Now, if they tell us a number of years, we want to know how much money are we going to have after 
five years, then we would take a five and we would plug it in for T. We would know that that's multiplied, so that's five times T. So I know that I'm gonna have a 60 out there as an exponent. So then I can type that in with a 60 as an exponent and get my total. And if I do that, I type it right in the calculator, 100 times 0 1.005 to the 60th power. I'm going to end up with $134.89. That would be my total amount of money after five years in that account. Which actually is pretty good. I mean, you earned over a third of your principal and in interest. That's pretty good. This was a lot of stuff, okay? A lot of formulas, a lot of letters, a lot of numbers. Mike? Yes, Rob the nearest cent. Yep. Yeah. Two, two places after that one for sure. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions about this? 